just stood throwing me. <laughs> Which way are we going? That's true to be fair. Shall we go to the secret garden? What's the secret garden? Have you not been? No, I haven't. I've been doing all my little social distance walks there. It's like round to, um, to the other side and it's really private and cute. Nice, all right. It's a bit weird in my face. I love it. This is it. Oh my face. Isn't it so nice? I've not been here before. Or just have like a set moment where you were like, oh, this is real. I guess I was raised in a Christian home, so I've always been to church and things like that, and I was dedicated um, as a baby. It's gone in like peaks and troughs, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I was baptised, I think, when I was 13 um, with my best mate um, in Nottingham, and at the time, I definitely felt like the need for God and I felt like God was real at that point in life mm. so I suppose that that's the point where you would say I was a Christian if you like yeah. because I chose for myself but I definitely like fell away from God I didn't really connect with God on a deep level or I always knew he was real mm. but I didn't connect with the Bible or with church I didn't want to go I didn't like people yeah. there I thought they were weird <laughs> yeah so was there like a certain time where that sort of changed and became a little bit more real for you or was it kind of more of a gradual process I think, like I say, it kind of went up and down at different points. So I think when really hard things happened in my teenage years, um, I felt like God's presence was there, even though I didn't really understand him or mm. understand his presence much. But the real turning point was when I was 18 and I started going to church at uni. All right, so you started coming to CCM. Um, yeah. So did you kind of like stop going to church before then for a little bit or you just sort of took it more seriously when you first came? Yeah, so I was kind of always going throughout sixth form like with my mum back in Derbyshire um, but as I say not hugely connecting with anything and not truly believing anything I suppose. Um, and then when I came to uni I was living in the party halls um, and oh, I was really... Nice. What halls were there? Um, Oak House, oh, yeah. you know by Owens Park. I heard someone say once about Oak House um, I think I'd rather camp out in a tent all year than like live yeah. in Oakwood. More partying than studying. Nice. But I embraced that and I really enjoyed it for a time. Mm. And I think there was about maybe six to eight weeks where I didn't go to church once because I was living up here in Manchester. Mm. So what was it that like made you want to come to church when you first came to Manchester? Yeah. Um, so I was like really getting into the uni lifestyle, like I said, um, <laughs> enjoying it. And I just really felt like in I don't know, in my heart or whatever, that I didn't feel like myself. Yeah. I don't know, I just didn't feel right. Something didn't feel right. So I was Googling like churches in the local area and I ended up going to another church. And I didn't feel like that church was the right place for me, but what that church did was um, reignite that desire to, right, to yeah. find somewhere. So I then looked, what's the closest church? You know, classic, lazy student. <laughs> Um, and it was CCM because I was in Owens Park, right? And it's like yeah. two minutes walk away. So I went there the next week and I made my housemate come with me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, they're all going to be such weirdos. Like, trust me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. my experience of like, you know, Christian, like And teenagers. then you met me and was like, yep. And it was confirmed. literally you I met. <laughs> no, all these such nice people came up to me and they were wearing like, normal clothes and like they were laughing about like normal things and I was like wait young Christians aren't weird yeah yeah and I was talking to people and they were saying things like oh yeah I went to a factory last night blah 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 it was fun and I was like hang on a minute these lot are like quite normal yeah like oh come to our community group like we'll make you dinner and I was like yeah all right then like these lot seem pretty normal yeah so that's what made me come back and just never really left since. How would you say your faith has developed since kind of coming when you were 18 to Manchester? It's just completely like, completely changed my life. I feel like I understand more of who God is now than I ever have mm. before. Um, a community group was huge in that for me. Yeah. Having those discussions with people about real life, about real situations and understanding that other people have been through some of the things that I've been yeah. through and how how the Bible fit into all of that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and my housemates, I remember them saying to me in first year, like after a couple of months, um, where do you keep sneaking off to on a Sunday night? <laughs> and I just told them, I was like, oh, um, 
I started going to church and they were like, why? <laughs> something, something changed and they could tell how different I was and how like my habits started to change. And I don't know, God, I just felt like God grabbed hold of me at the beginning of first year and was like, you are not ending up in this like darkness, you know, just going out all the time and drinking and the drugs and everything. Mm. I just feel like God was like, no, you're not doing so, that. Thanks so much for sharing your story, mate. Um, just a quick question for you to finish. Mm. How would you say that kind of you made that transition into believing, well, this is, this is not just like a weird freak show. Um, mm. This is something that I really want to be a part of. Mm. I, think, um, I think that comes with just like letting God change your heart, basically. Like obviously God will transform your whole life, change your whole life, but it's for the better and it's not yeah. about it's not about the fact that you can't be a normal uni student again. You can't yeah. go to bars, you can't go out with your friends, you can't wear that or do this. Like it's not about rules and regulations, it's about having a God that loves you and forgives you and accepts you, no matter how much of a mess up you are and even when you still mess up, even when you know him and yeah. like I think just for me, like my perspective changed on Christians when I realised that they didn't just think they were better than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that they weren't just like holier than thou, like, oh, I don't mm -hmm. do this, I don't do that, I don't do the yeah, other. Yeah. And I really felt that with some of the first friends that I made at, at CCM, people like you who were like, yeah, like, <laughs> you, you were really honest though, you were like, okay, maybe I wouldn't do this or that because God's changed my heart on that and he's challenged me on that, but you were still I don't like, even remember saying that. But like different things yeah, came yeah, up, yeah, no, you know, you. Um, but you were still really vulnerable and honest and so were other people in saying like, I'm still a bit of a mess, but God accepts me and he loves me. Mm. That's, yeah, really driven me to to want to instill that message in other young girls that come into church and be like, it's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't have to be like perfect. God doesn't expect you to come to him shiny and never having done anything yeah, wrong. That's so cool. There's no one set type of Christian. Yeah. Like there's always going to be stereotypes, but you don't have to look a certain way. And I love that about our church. Thanks so much for sharing, babe. Do you want to come around for a coffee? I would love to. Social distance, we'll get in the garden. Really candid. <laughs> you keep getting too